Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for being here. My name is Andrew, coming to you from the beautiful Carolinas. Today's topic is going to be the rise and fall of the narcissist. Think about that for a minute. Everyone, if you like the content, please like, subscribe, and share. So the rise and fall of the narcissist, this is exactly how their life goes most times. In other words, they are duping people and manipulating people throughout most of their existence until they can't do it any longer. And that's when the fall comes into play. I'll jump into the rise first and foremost, and I'll finish with the fall. Throughout the body of the narcissistic's narcissist life, what they do is they find a way to manipulate people, to manipulate their parents, their colleagues, their friends, their romantic interests, people in schools or communities or organizations they're part of. And they're very good at doing this. They're extremely good at doing this. And they figure out rather quickly that bird is beautiful. It was so quiet here a moment ago. They find, figure out quickly that their poor behavior is tolerated by many people and that there are no boundaries that they have to pay attention to because they like to break boundaries and that they can get away by skirting the rules of life. And also a huge one that there are many times no consequences for their poor action. Now you may say to yourself, Andrew, well, what's going on? Why doesn't everybody do that? I'll tell you why everyone doesn't do that because most people on the planet have morals, they have values, and they have respect for other individuals, and they want the best for other individuals. Now that's not everybody. It certainly is me, sincerely, it's always been me. But the narcissist is quite the contrary. They are takers, they are manipulators. They are people who see opportunities in other individuals, and they want to extract as much from that individual or other people as they possibly can. That is one of the reasons why the narcissistic abusive cycle goes on and on and on. Whether you are in it, you were in it, or my hope is you're not about to be enter, enter another narcissistic relationship, but the one constant in all these narcissistic relationships, it's not you, it's the narcissist. But this is the rise of the narcissist. Remember, they are exhibiting poor behavior throughout most of their early life, and it rolls into their, into their 20s, let's say. And in their 20s, perhaps they bat their eyelashes here or there, and next thing you know, they get what they want, or they have the rosy cheeks, or they use the charm that it seems that many narcissists have, and they can turn it on and off, like you turn a water faucet on or off. But they use these abilities that they have, that they've fine-tuned through early life, and they get what they want from people. Now, many times the narcissist will go under the radar, or covertly, and they'll fly under the radar and act like they're person A, when in fact they're person B. Other times, the narcissist is just like a bull in a china shop. They are more overt and they just flat out don't care or grandiose. Now, I don't use the narcissistic terms like that. I just think that may be the first time I've ever done it. I'm just letting you know that narcissism is not one size fits all. It's on a spectrum and some people have a little bit of it, some people have a lot, and then there are many people in the middle. But most likely, the individual you're thinking about, the, the person you were in the relationship with was a very toxic or challenging person. And they most likely did their best to manipulate you and abuse you and financially abuse you and emotionally abuse you and mentally abuse you, perhaps even physically. What they wanted to do, most likely, is they wanted to take you down into the low vibrational state where they exist. And they wanted to steal your beautiful bright light, your positive energy. Remember, you vibrate super high, higher than the star or stars or the moon. And the narcissist saw this. And most likely when you encountered the narcissist, if you weren't born into a narcissistic relationship, most likely what happened is the narcissist sized you up rather quickly, figured out what made you tick. They got really close to you, maybe entered a business with you or a romantic relationship with you or had you relocate or uh, you loaned the money or you fell in love with them or created a family or got married. There's so many different reasons why, but maybe it's all those things. But when they did this, let's say the wedding, for example, as an example, once that wedding ring was on your finger or vice versa, the narcissist now knew that they had you. Now, when you entered that marriage, were you thinking that somebody would have somebody? Maybe, but your viewpoint or vantage point of having somebody meant you've probably found your equal or someone to, that is gonna be there for you to take care of you and you take care of them and you could grow old gracefully together. That was probably your intention. I'm sure it was, as a matter of fact, but that's not what the narcissist saw. They saw an opportunity in you. They saw a way to weaponize your love against you, to weaponize your empathy against you, to blow up your social circle, to blow up your status, your health, your finances, your hobbies, to have you literally become what they wanted you to become. So a very small example there would be, let's say you had car A, whatever it was, you owned it, and you drove it, or yeah, you drove it, sorry, and you loved the car. Well, when you met the narcissist and once they got close to you, they told you that that car wasn't good for you. You should get car B. And what did you do? Well, to appease the narcissist, you probably sold car A, even though you loved it and you had it for a while and it was a very reliable, great car. 
but you turned to the way that they wanted you to be. You got car B. And when you got car B, next thing you know, that's where it starts. Then your hair cut changes, the clothes you wear change, who you're spending time with, etc. Maybe it's vice versa, but the whole point is you became an extension of the narcissist. And that again is where the narcissist rises because they captured you for a period of time, which was the length of the relationship. They did a lot of homework on you. They figured out what made you work and what you liked and didn't like. They mirrored all these things back to you. And then once they had their dirty fangs sunken into you, it was too late. You didn't know what you were up against because you weren't taught this in school. Now, this again is where the narcissist rises. Remember, when the narcissist first meets people, i.e. strangers or the potential new supplies, usually they have their game face on. Usually they bring their best foot forward. And usually they want to test people to see if other people are, let's say, let's use layman's terms, checking them out or looking at them a little bit more than often or interested in what they do. This is one of the hooks of the narcissist. They are always scouring the room at barbecues, at events, at churches, in ceremonies, in, in schools. They're looking around to see who's checking them out and they're trying to get certain individuals' attention. And for one period of time, that was you. In other words, you were on the radar and they were looking at you as a viable new source of supply and you fit the bill perfectly. Next thing you know, like I keep sharing, you enter the relationship, maybe you got married and boom, you're now trapped in the narcissistic fog. Why I say that is because once that wedding ring was on your finger or you relocated, they knew they had you, they broke you down. They had you become super vulnerable. They had you become a shell of yourself. They had you believing that they had your best interest at heart when nothing, and I mean nothing, could be further from the truth. The narcissist was trying to take you down for the count. You just didn't know it until well into the relationship when your health really took a hit. Was the narcissist there for you at the hospital? Probably not. Were they there nursing you back to health? Probably not. Were they picking up the meds that you needed? Maybe, but they would act like it was a real big deal to do so, even though the pharmacy was probably two blocks away from your house, but they acted like they would have to lift mountains and molehills just to get that for you. See, this isn't love. It's not authenticity. It's not genuineness. It's not empathy. It's not how a relationship should be. A relationship, stable or healthy relationship with two individuals should be like a tennis match. It goes back and forth and back and forth. And you communicate with the one individual and they communicate back with you. You find a happy place in the middle to meet and you begin living your best life. When you're in a toxic narcissistic relationship, you find out rather quickly that you will become subservient to the narcissist because the narcissist believes they're better than you, smarter than you, more beautiful than you, and that whatever you have, they should have for themselves. That's why they want to take, take, take. And when they're done, what do they want to do? That's right, they want to take more. But this is all throughout the rise of the narcissist. This is all when they have you and they don't ever believe that you're going to figure them out. They don't ever believe you're going to break the trauma bond. They don't ever believe you're going to make a move and exit the relationship. And again, when I say that, I mean, if you were discarded or if you exited it yourself, the point is when that relationship ended, they didn't believe that you were strong enough to make it. Play that again. They honestly didn't. They did not think you could do anything without them. That is why so frequently the narcissist looks in the past at former sources of supply. And believe me, you were one of them because you made it this far in the video. And they will reflect back, wow, I really did damage to that person. I really did a number on them. But you know what? They actually look better. They're actually thriving and they're looking great. And what, they got married again? Oh my gosh, this person's really doing great. Guess what, I blew it. Yeah, the narcissist will say that to themselves in their tiny little pea brain every once in a while. They'll look back at other sources of supply. And the reason you may say, why would they do that, Andrew? I'll tell you why, because probably the current source of supply is being devalued and they're not one one millionth of the person you were. Nothing against the new supply, I'm just sharing with you. When the narcissist met you and found you and did what they did to you, they didn't realize they were gonna create a superhuman. They didn't realize they were gonna create one of the strongest forces on the planet in a human body, which is you. They didn't realize that. They thought you would probably not be existing on the planet or still pining for them or still wondering if you did enough or still wondering if you could have done enough or wondering if it was your fault. None of these things are accurate. The truth of the matter is the narcissist saw you. They did something with you and they got close to you. Like I said, they put you put a roof over their head or you loaned the money or married them, whatever you did and they tried to literally take you down each and every day. Yeah, there were good moments in between there, absolutely. But in between were about 28 days of toxicity, of gaslighting, of ghosting, of the silent treatment, of the smear campaign that you didn't even know was going on, of rage fits, etc. And you never knew who was gonna open the front door when the front door would open and the narcissist would be there. Would it be Dr. Jekyll or Mr. Hyde? You didn't know, that was a guessing game. That meant you were walking around on eggshells and you couldn't be. 
You couldn't even boil an egg properly without the narcissist budding in the kitchen, pushing you aside and saying, uh, the temperature is a little too high. You really need to learn how to boil an egg better. And you're sitting there scratching your head like, what are you talking about? But these are the kind of things that the narcissist does because they want to consistently devalue you. They don't want you believing that you can even tie your own shoelace, but yet they want to control what you do. They want to have you run to the store five different times to buy the right jar of peanut butter. And every time you will come back, but that's exactly what you said. You showed me this one, remember? And they're like, uh, no, but it changed because that one has A, B, and C. We need to get another one. And you do it. Why? I'll tell you why you do it. Because you were in the narcissistic fog, a place the narcissist never thought you would escape. So all of these things I'm mentioning are the rise of the narcissist. And then one day when you were discarded, or if you ended it yourself, but most likely you were discarded, that's when you had to pick yourself up by the bootstraps, dust yourself off. You had to find that needle in a haystack and try and figure out what you were up against. And then lo and behold, you figured out it was narcissism or certainly a toxic individual who wasn't on your side and didn't have your best interest at heart. They actually wanted to take everything from you. You look at your bank account, you look at your health, you look at your network of friends, you look at your job, you look at your assets and you realize, wow, they really did take me for a ride. They took everything and more. I don't know what to say. When you say that to yourself, then you really say, oh my gosh, there are people on the planet that don't have my best interest at heart. What happened there? Well, I'll tell you what happened. You fell in love with a narcissist, a toxic individual who was wearing a mask to manipulate you and mirroring back all of your hopes, dreams, aspirations, and potential future goals. And once they knew they had you, I'll say it for the final time in the video, that's when they laid off all the fakeness, the fake love, the fake empathy, the fake humanity. And that's when they peppered you with all the abuse and it kept going on and on and on. That's why if you did marry the narcissist, I can drop comments below if this resonates with you. How many times did you actually take your wedding ring off or the narcissist did and you put it on the kitchen counter saying, I didn't sign up for this, I, I, I'm, I'm not good. If that was you, again, drop comments below or something similar. Maybe you don't even wear your wedding ring anymore because you're so beaten down or broken down or the wedding or the marriage wasn't what you thought it was so you don't even wear the ring, I don't know. I'm just sharing with you. When everything in the beginning of the relationship during the love bomb slash euphoric stage you thought would continue on, when all those behaviors you thought would continue on at least to a degree throughout the rest of your life, when they all disappear overnight, literally the day after the wedding it takes place, then you're trapped. You're in no man's land and you don't know what to do. But you keep fighting and working for the narcissist. But like I shared, one day you put yourself, you, you figure this out and you say to yourself, I can't get over this. Like who would do this? Well, a narcissist would do it or someone that's toxic that doesn't have your best interest at heart. And then you start putting yourself back together. You begin to journal, you begin to heal, you begin to see a therapist that unfortunately has gone through the narcissistic abusive cycle. You meditate, you exercise if you can, you're beginning to eat properly, your strength is returning, your clear mind is returning, you're not trapped in the fog any longer. You've escaped the, the devaluation stage clearly. And now you realize that you have nothing but time on your hands. In other words, there's a huge void here because you're isolated perhaps even in your own house, maybe even during a pandemic. Point being there is you have nothing but time because now you have to heal. You have to process so many things. And what did you do? You begin to heal. You begin to figure out the healing path and what it is and how important it is and that you want nothing to do for that period of time with literally anybody because you want to self-isolate many times. But at the same time, you need to explain yourself to people and you try to explain yourself to other individuals and they can't wrap their head around it. So those people get depleted rather quickly. But then each and every day you figure out you're getting a little bit stronger and a little bit stronger. And those days turn into weeks and the, you're on the healing path now and you understand that, wow, I'm having, I'm starting to feel better. I'm starting to feel good. Then you have a couple setbacks. Perhaps you get a Hoover or perhaps you see some old pictures or you find some heirloom or something that reminded you of the narcissist in that past life. And then you keep going and keep moving forward and more and more and more. More time goes by. You're beginning to get stronger mentally, physically, emotionally, financially, spiritually, every way possible. And then each and every day you're making progress with little speed bumps along the way or sometimes big speed bumps. And then you get it. One day you wake up and you're not ruminating. You're not thinking about the narcissist. And one day you say to yourself, oh my gosh, that relationship, it seems like it was 500 years ago, but maybe it was only a few years ago. And you say to yourself, I cannot believe I escaped that thing. I can't believe I got out in one piece. I can't believe I'm here because now you're out of the narcissistic fog. And now this is the fall of the narcissist. It's because now you can't unsee what you've seen. You now have experiences that most people on the planet can't even dream about or fathom. Your life is basically like a Hollywood movie. The only difference is there are not paid actors in it. There are real human beings, which include you. And all of these things that you went through and all the journaling and the hard work and the sleepless nights and the tears and the eating and the not eating and the ruminating and the crying, maybe even you experienced the angry stage, all these things are now coming to a head 
and you're understanding, holy cow, what an amazing ride that was. Would I wanna go through it again? Not in a thousand lifetime, lifetimes. Do I wish this upon my worst enemy? No, I don't. Do I wish this upon anybody? No. Do I blame the narcissist and do I understand that they had my best, in, my worst interest at heart, I mean? No, you don't blame anybody. You move on, you move forward. Do you call them out and do you expose them? No, you don't. Do you take the high road and lift your head high and say, yes, I did the right thing each and every day. I did the exact thing I should have done. I'm an incredible human being and I'm glowing and my doors are opening for me and the abundance is just around the corner for me. Yeah, that's what you do say. Because you were left for dead and people didn't think that you were gonna make it. And many people that you thought were your friends, i.e. flying monkeys, they watched you and your life implode. They sat on the sidelines and grabbed their popcorn and watched it happen. But what they don't understand is that their lives too will implode because everybody's life goes through speed bumps or hurdles. It's just that not everyone's life goes through a narcissistic relationship like you have. Now all these things, what is the fall of the narcissist? The fall is this. Number one, you were the best thing that ever happened to them. Number two, the new supply, whoever they are, and if they're married or not, doesn't matter. God bless them. I wish them the best of luck. I sincerely do, and I hope you do too. Number three is the narcissist will implode each and every relationship with their own kids, their own parents, neighbors, coworkers, colleagues, people in communities, or hobby groups, whomever. And that's a fact. That's what they are destined to do over and over and over again. Number four is that people are becoming more and more awakened and aware, educated and empowered, and they're understanding that it's not just one narcissist they encountered. Perhaps there are others in their immediate family that they couldn't quite wrap their head around why they didn't talk to them or treat them properly or play with them when they were kids or attend their games or whatever. They didn't do these things because they, they wanted to devalue their own sibling or family member. The next thing I will share with you is the fall of the narcissist is a big one because what happens with most narcissists, not all of them, but most, they end up the aging narcissist. Their own immediate family members won't talk to them. They could have a boatload of money or not, doesn't matter. But their kids won't talk to them. Neighbors won't talk to them. Former friends won't talk to them. Colleagues from a day gone by don't care about them because they're probably taken advantage of financially in business transactions. And the aging narcissist, as I mentioned, I did a series or a bunch of videos on this topic. It, they're not a pretty sight to see because the aging narcissist is wearing clothes of a younger generation trying to still maintain their youth. And I get it, many people wanna do that, I understand it. There's a difference between embracing your age and acting your age than trying to act like you're 30 years younger or hanging out with your son or daughter's age group when you're at least two or three times their age. The whole point is the exposure of the narcissist. It, you don't do it, they'll do it themselves because they can't help themselves because their poor behavior ramps up as they get older. And this is one of the falls of the narcissist. You see, the narcissist believes that no one will ever figure out who they are. You've done just that. The narcissist believes that they are superior to you. No, they're not. They're actually inferior to most people. And the narcissist always, always understands one thing, that they know what they're doing. They know that they want to do it. They know that they need to do it. They know that they won't be responsible or accountable or introspect, but yet they also know that that is their destiny. Each and every night, they have to put their head on the pillow and know what they did to not only you, but to other former sources of supply or even their immediate family members or colleagues or friends. That's the fall of the narcissist. They have to stay trapped in their mind. You, on the other hand, have the beautiful ability to have already healed or heal, and now you can enjoy your future and you can live in the present moment. The narcissist can't do that. They are haunted by shadows of the past, haunted by past relationships, haunted about all the financial abuse they, they threw on people, haunted by all the relationships they blew up and haunted by their all, all their poor behavior. Now again, before I close the video, I wanna let you know this isn't a doom and gloom video. It's nothing against the narcissists all over the planet. It's to let you know that the narcissist, they're a toxic individual. They're a dark energy source and they know it. And they try to take other people down in the low vibrational quagmire with them. And they, they did it for a while, but they can't do it any longer. So that's the rise of the narcissist when they owned you and they had you. And the fall is when you escape and you break free and you heal properly because you can't unsee what you've seen and spending one minute longer than you, you need to in a toxic or narcissistic relationship is one minute too long. That's why you get the wisdom. You go no contact, you block them, you remove all fly monkeys and people associated with them. So guys, that's the video. I hope you liked it. I loved doing it. From the beautiful Carolinas, this is Andrew. Namaste. Have a great afternoon, evening, or morning, no matter where you are on the planet. You are not alone. I love you all. God bless you. I have a long walk home. I hope you enjoyed the video. I love you, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye, guys.